Uh, hello students, uh, how are you? Are you fine? I hope that uh, you are in uh, good uh, health, you and your families, uh, especially in these days, the troubles of uh, this uh, uh, pandemic. I hope that it passed in a good uh, way. Uh, today is the first lesson of uh, the revision prepared by some teachers. It's my turn to, to get this, or to have this uh, revision of English for all the students of Baya School. Uh, we try to start from all the beginning, the first sequence. Uh, the first sequence, by the way, uh, do you still remember the, the title of the sequence? Maybe no. Yeah, it is. So the first sequence is the universal or our universal famous landmarks and outstanding figures. Now, we try to uh, explain the sequence or the, all the words of the sequence. Our universal, for the word universe, of course, it means uh, the worldwide. Now, famous. What is famous? Something which is well known. Most of the people know, know it. Can you give me some synonyms? Uh, I'm famous, well known, recognizable, important in some ways. That, landmarks. What is landmark? We have land and we have mark. Uh, a landmark is a building. A structure, uh, something man-made thing through which we recognize the place. For example, we have Taj Mahal. Taj Mahal. It's uh, a sign, or when we say Taj Mahal, our minds go straight away to India. And then if we say the City of Liberty, of course you go to USA, New York. And then if you say the Eiffel Tower, for example, this is a landmark. They say that sometimes there are huge buildings, huge things that can be easily seen from a long distance. And it is. Outstanding figures. Outstanding is the same thing as famous. Well known. Figures. People. Persons. Famous people. In different uh, arts. Maybe you find singers. An outstanding figure. In singing, maybe in uh, sports, in different things. So, our universal famous landmarks and outstanding figures. This is our sequence. Now, if we can have an example of a landmark, we can have uh, Burj Al Khalifa, for example. Burj Al Khalifa. Some of you have visited Burj Al Khalifa. It's a huge, tall building. Well, I don't know, maybe it's uh, 800 uh, high. We have the I 
Eiffel Tower. We have, we have the clock tower. Ah, we don't forget the Big Ben. These are some of the, the famous landmarks. Now, uh, the thing that is, or which we have to do in this sequence, is to describe, to describe the landmark. Ah, we describe it. What does it mean to describe a landmark? To describe a landmark, it means I will give information about. Information in what? Information in location, for example. Height, for example. Uh, surface. The designer or designers, and so these are the information about uh, the landmark. Now, since now we know that we know all about our sequence, our title of the sequence. Now we move to to a point to revise something that maybe some of you haven't understood it, or they have some. Uh, slight troubles on it. We try to uh, explain it, which is comparison. To compare things. Comparison. We are we are talking about landmarks, so we will try to use comparison with landmarks at first. If we give you here, I have given you the height of. The height of Model Khalifa, I will give you the height of Big Ben, which is about 96 meters. I can give you the uh, Pisa in Italia, which is about 60 meters. Of course, we are talking about the height. Now, comparison. To compare. What does it mean to compare? To compare, it means to have two things. You have two things, or more than two things. We compare two things, or maybe more. If we compare two things. We compare Burj Al Khalifa to Big Bang. Two things. This is the, this is comparative. We use comparative adjective. We use comparative adjective. If we want to compare more than two, three. 100 millions. So we use superlative adjective. So the first thing is comparative adjective. Comparative. It means we are talking about just two things. When we say two things, two things, two persons. Mm -hmm. Two landmarks, two figures, and so on. We are comparing two. If we want to compare more than two, three, or more things, people, and so we use the superlative. So, repeat, comparison is to compare two things or more. Now, if we want to compare two things comparative, if we want to compare more, so we use superlative. We will talk about the comparative first. Comparative. Uh, listen. <clears throat> In adjectives, we have short and long adjectives. 
And this is the, the essential thing, the main thing that you should know first. Be before using comparative, you must know the short adjective and the long adjective. Short adjective, what does it mean? Short adjective, sir, you are talking about short and, uh, and long. So, what is it? Short adjective, it means it has got just one syllable. Well, sir, you are talking about one syllable, what is it? One syllable, it means you have one consonant and one vowel sound. Big. We have the B is a consonant sound, and we have just one vowel sound. One vowel sound. So, if we have one vowel sound, it means one syllable. Okay? If we have one vowel sound, so this word has got just one syllable. Now, we can have so many uh, adjectives, short adjectives, small, small, small. You can see how many letters are there here? One, two, three, four, five, five letters. But it's a short adjective. Why short adjective? It has got only one vowel sound, which is O, small. We can have tall, kind, and so on. These are the short adjectives. So this is the first one. So what do we say? What do we say? We said that in order to use comparatives, in, in order to compare, it means superlative, comparative, superiority, equality, and so on, you must, not you should, you must, you must know short adjectives and long adjectives. It's okay with the short adjective. We go to the long one. The long, the long adjective, it means here we have one. So, the long one, which has got more than one, it means it has got Two or more. Two adjectives or more. We can have famous. Famous here. You see here we have a vowel sound, which is a diphthong. A, fe, ma, fe, mus. So, diphthong, which is a vowel sound, and a, a vowel sound, a second vowel sound. How many vowel sounds do we have? We have two. So, it is two syllable word. Syllables word. This is long. Oh, we can beautiful, beautiful, important, success, and so on we go. So you you count. You count the vowel sounds. Beautiful. Beautiful. How many? Three. Three syllables. Three syllables, it means long. Got it? Short adjectives and long adjectives. Ah, I think that we start now comparing. We start comparing, we get just two. Don't forget short and long. So here we are, Burj Khalifa. Ah, Burj Al Khalifa is uh, 828 high, meters high. And we have big band, 96 meters high. Now, if we want to compare, to say this, look, we have the adjective tall. Tall. Which one is, uh, which one? So, Burj Al Khalifa is uh, tall. 
Big Bang. I will give the sentence here. Let's say, Burj Al Khalifa is down here than Big Bang. Burj Al Khalifa is. You try to know. And we have the adjective tool. I will give you the answer. When we compare two things, we compare two things with short adjective. With what? With short adjective, tall, big, and so on. We have, uh, I will give you just two examples, and then you, uh, you, got, you, you got the they are the example of the other adjectives. Here we have kind to compare it, to make to use it. When, when we use it for comparing, it's kind, kind, er, kinder than, kinder, and big. We have big, be careful here, bigger with double G. So, kind, bigger, short adjectives. Short adjective. So, Burj Al Khalifa is taller. Is taller than Big Bang. Burj Al Khalifa is taller than Big Bang. Here we got. The comparison using comparative with short adjective. It's very, it's not that easy, but it's okay with it. If you have short adjective, you just add ER. You just add ER. Ton, toner. Small, smaller. Kind, kind. Hot, hotter. And so, with short adjectives, we have only the ER. Now we move to the long adjectives. Long adjectives. Long. Oh. Two minutes ago, we said that long adjective is an adjective with more than two or more than one syllable. Two syllables and more. And we got the word famous, for example. Uh, or beautiful. We said, for example, we yeah, have. Uh, Pizza tower? Is. And we got the word famous. Then. Makan Shahid. Then I'm shaped. And the, uh, the adjective famous. Pizza tower. Not I'm shaped. Uh, which one is visited by many people? I think, for me, I think about Pizza tower in Italy. Not I'm shaped is well known for the Algerians. So, Pisa Tower is, can we say famous sir? Like this? No, cannot say famous sir. Why? It has got two vowel sounds, two syllables, so it is a long adjective. It differs. It's another way. We use another way. Which is 
Uh, Pisa Tower is more famous than Bakamashi. Is more famous than Bakamashi. We got it. So we yeah, have just two. Repeat in a short way. which is superlative superlative no it's not okay with it we anyways the second way of comparing is Superlative. 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 We talked about comparative, now superlative. Superlative, it means comparing more than two things. Comparing more than two things things. So, we go back to comparison, to the definition of comparison. Comparison is comparing 
two or more things. When we talked about comparatives, we talked about two things, comparing two things. This is comparative. And now we move to comparing more than two things, which is uh, superlative. Three things, for example, more than that. And it's the same way, the same method, the same thing with comparative. Uh, we try to remain with the same example. Bot Khalifa, eight to eight meters height, and Big Ben with ninety six about the height. And I uh, have Pisa Tower with about 60, 56, I think, about 60 meters height. Three things. Now we are going to compare these three things using superlative. Can we use comparative with the three? We cannot. Why? Because comparative is just between two. Watch Khalifa with Big Ben. Big Ben with Pisa Tower. Pisa Tower with Khalifa. And so on. Just two. But superlative, yeah, we can use, can use it with uh, three. How do we use it? I told you that is the same as comparative. It's not that difficult. It's just, uh, it needs only concentration, to concentrate on the other thing. Like comparative, we have short adjectives and long adjectives. The same thing, short adjective, we repeat it again, with one syllable. With one syllable, this is short adjective. More than one syllable. This is long adjective. And here we have superlative. I will give you the example. Burj Khalifa, 8 to 8. Big Bang, 9 6. Pisa Tower, 6 0. Oh, six, zero. Burj Khalifa, if we compare it with Big Bang, we say Burj Khalifa is higher or taller than Big Bang. And then, we compare Big Bang with Pisa Tower, we say Big Bang is higher or is taller than Pisa Tower. Now, we want to say that Bot Khalifa is than Big Bang and Pisa Tower. We are not comparing Burj Khalifa with Big Bang. We are comparing, we want to compare Burj Khalifa with both uh, Big Bang and Pisa Tower. We say, Burj, this is the example, Burj and Khalifa is higher than Big Ben comparative Big Ben is higher than Pisa Tower so 
sau bor chaiva is 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 the highest is the highest highest it means higher than big bang and higher than this tower so it is the highest We compare more than two things. We are comparing Khalifa, Big Bang, and Pizza Tower. No, we want to say that Burj Khalifa is higher than Big Bang and higher than Pizza Tower and higher than this and higher than this. So it is the highest. It is the highest. And we have full stop. Higher than Big Bang. Higher than Pizza Tower. The highest full stop. Uh, as I told you, this is a short adjective. Now, uh, I want to say that Burj Al Khalifa is famous. Ah, in comparison, we say more famous, but we want to to, to use it with superlative. It means uh, uh, with three. We must we say Burj Khalifa is uh, the most famous and this is the superlative Burj Al Khalifa is more famous than Big Bang comparative Big Bang is more famous than Big Bang Burj Al Khalifa is the most famous. Okay, now things that so a short adjective with the highest short adjective E S T long adjective most the most and the adjective. We will get the rule here. We have short adjective, we said high. Of comparison. 
comparatives and superlatives. And we have seen examples. And I made it deliberately using the same examples, the same words. I did it deliberately. It means I meant it. So, things that we, uh, we should or we shouldn't forget is that uh, with comparatives, don't forget the word then. It's a, a main word here. With superlative, don't forget the word the. Uh, when we correct the exam, the test, and so on, we find so many pupils uh, think that ah, it's bigger. So, no. Bigger than you are comparing to. You must put uh, them. And then here, you know, highest. Ah, oh, I know superlative. I know so it's in EST. Oh, EST. What about the, the? The is a main word here. You must put it. Well, that's it for the superlatives and the comparatives. My mother has. Uh, we have the word tidy or tidy room and fine. On and me. Then me. Australia is, and we have the adjective big, then England. Uh, Chinese. few examples to get the idea of comparison, comparative pattern. My brother has a tidy room than me. Tidy. Tidy. How many syllables do you have? Two syllables? Yeah, two syllables. Tidy. One, two. Short or long? Long. We say more tidy than? We say more tidy than? According to the rule, according to the rule, we say more tidy than. Be careful, I'm saying and repeating. According to the rule. According to the rule. 
it means we have an exception. Number two, Australia is big. Big than England. We say Australia is big than England. Big than no. So comparative to Australia and England. So is bigger. Bigger on the other hand. Chinese and English. Two things, two languages. Difficult. How many syllables do we have in difficult? We have one, two, three. Three syllables, long adjectives. So Chinese is more difficult than English. Some is talkative. I talks he talks a lot in class. He talks a lot. He's talkative. So talkative. One. Talk talkative. Three. Uh, by the way, this one is not pronounced. It's countless. It's out. Okay? It's not uh, it's not counted. So it's out. Three syllables, it means long adjective, so it is more talkative than, than John. Okay with this? Say um, Paris, but Paris is beautiful city in France. I haven't been to France, I don't know, it's just an example. is important. How many syllables do we have in important? We have important three. We are talking about superlatives now. Why? How do we know that it's superlative and not comparative? English 
We have English and we have language. How many languages do we have? So many languages. We are not talking about English and the French. We are not talking about English and Arabic uh, or Russian. No, we are talking about English comparing to other languages. So we are talking, we are comparing English with so many languages. So we use the superlative and we have a long adjective. So is the most important language for students. Paris is, we have beautiful three. We are talking about Paris, we are, com we are not comparing Paris to Marsilia, for example. We are not comparing Paris to Monaco. We are comparing Paris to the French cities, all the cities of France. So, it's superlative. We are, talking, we are comparing so many cities, among them Paris. So Paris is the most, uh, the most beautiful, beautiful city in France. Peter, we are comparing Peter to some? No, of course. We are comparing Peter to George? No. So we are comparing Peter, Peter to all the pupils in class. Twenty. 30, 15, 5, uh, 14, 45. So we are comparing Peter to them. Who survived? But Peter, yeah, Peter is kind. And we have George, is kind too. And we have uh, Sandy, for example, is kind. But uh, Peter is a uh, short adjective. Is we have just only one syllable. So, is uh, Peter is the kindest, the kindest pupil in class. Long adjectives, short adjectives. The Mecca clock tower, building in the world. We are comparing, we are comparing Mecca clock tower not to Big Bang. We are not comparing Mecca Clock Tower to Burj Khalifa. We are not comparing Mecca Clock Tower to Taj Mahal, for example. We are, we are comparing Mecca Clock Tower to, the huge, to all the huge buildings in the world. Building, we didn't say uh, Big Bang. We didn't say Taj Mahal. We say building. So, how many buildings do we have in the world? So many. So, the Mecca clock tower is the short adjective, tallest building in the world. It's the tallest building in the world. Talk, talked, ed in the past. 
help helped ED in the past. This is regular. They, they follow the rule. When we say irregular, it means this word, this verb, this adjective, this noun, uh, doesn't follow this rule. For example, go. We cannot say go the, in the past. We say went. So uh, it doesn't follow this rule. This is an irregular. Now, in the adjectives, we have, in the, adjectives we have the same in comparative and superlative. Bad. Bad. We never say better than. Bad. Have you seen what I have written? I said bad, better than. This is in the comparative. The baddest in superlative. Oh, no, it's not. This one is not. We cannot have it. We cannot say better than. We cannot say the baddest. Sir, I have understood that we cannot say better and we cannot say the baddest. So, what do we say then? I will tell you. We say worse than and this is for comparative uh, we say the worst with superlative this is the first word second one good do we say gooder than? no the goodest no. What do you say? So we say better than. This is for comparative. And we say the best for superlative. And that's it. For. For. Near. And far, near and far. We don't say farthest. We don't say far. We say farthest, farther than, farther, or further than. Now we can say for this is for comparative. And we can say the. Farthest uh, or the first for superlative. One, two, three. We have old. This is the word old. If we are talking about the age, if we are talking about the age, we are not talking about the new and old, no. We are not talking, it's not the word, the synonym of ancient, no. We are talking about the age. If we are talking about the age, uh, Tony is elder. Elder than. This is for comparative. Uh, the L the stuff for superlative. For superlative. We have about five uh, four exceptions. Now we move here and be careful to it. I told you before when we talked about the adjective tidy, I told you it's according to the rule. 
Now, tidy, pretty, and messy. It's not messy with Ronaldo and someone, okay? Messy. It's the, the opposite of tidy. Okay. Tidy, it means uh, everything is in its place. This is tidy. A tidy room. Everything the book is here. The television is there. And this is tidy. And messy, it means oh, all in a mess. When you enter from, to your room, you must do this. This is messy. So we have white and white and white. Okay, these are only examples. All the other ones the same. Uh, one syllable, two syllables. One syllable, two syllables. One and two. We said that two syllables is longer. But with these words, and be careful with these adjectives. So, hmm? These, not these three, these are examples, the same, with all the adjectives like this. We work with them as short adjectives. It means we say, we say type D here, then, and the tidiest. We say pretty, prettier prettier than and the prettiest. We say that messier than the messiest. Okay? These are the two exceptions in using comparatives and superlatives. Irregular adjectives, irregular adjectives, and two syllable or two syllables adjectives. So just be careful to these things or exceptions. Is it? So that's it for uh, the first lesson. We'll try to have other things in another one. Thank you for uh, watching and see you next time, inshallah. Uh, now, my second lesson, we will have, we will talk about another thing, another grammatical thing. We move to uh, something that we notice that some pupils, not all, some pupils, does it know or confuse using these things which are using the interrogative and negative forms of the verbs or of the sentences, structures. Uh, we will talk first, we will use first the present simple. The present simple and then we try to it's, it's the same, of course, with the past simple. And if you understand uh, the, the base of, uh, or the rule with the present simple, sure, you can use it with the, the, the past simple, you can use it with the perfect, you can use it with the continuous, and so on. Okay. Now, we start. I will give, since we are talking about landmark, I will give a slight, defi not definition, but a slight uh, information about uh, uh, a landmark. Let's take the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower is is a famous landmark. in France or located in France. Uh, it stands on a huge a huge square base. It can be seen from a long distance. The Eiffel Tower is a famous
famous landmark in France. It stands on a huge square base. It can be seen from a long distance. Now, since we are talking about interrogative, negative, and so on, we are talking about verbs. Try to uh, take out the verbs. The Eiffel Tower is a, fa is a famous landmark in France. Where is the verb here? Sure, it is. Is. It stands on a huge square base. Where is the verb here? Stands. Okay, stands. Uh, it can be seen from a long distance. The verb. Yeah, can be. Okay, and can is a verb. In these three sentences, we have three different verbs. And they are all in present. Three different verbs. So, three different uh, kinds of conjugating. Is. Stands. Can. Uh, we start with the negative form, with the negative form. The Eiffel Tower is the tower is uh, a famous landmark. I'm talking here about the verb is, verb to be, the verb to be. I want to put this sentence in the negative form, in negative form. I will say the Eiffel, Eiffel Tower, I have the same verb and I add not not uh, famous no it's not a common not a common building uh, common is the opposite of famous since the Eiffel Tower is a famous landmark, so it is not a common landmark, a common building. So we have verb to be plus not. I will say, or I will use, it can, it can be, seen from a long distance. The verb here is can. The model can is the main verb here. So, it can be seen from a long distance. If we want to have the uh, opposite of, of the negative form, I say it. It can not, or you can have it in one word, you can have it in both. Okay, cannot in one word and cannot in two words. But the useful is cannot like this. You can have it both. Okay, cannot with one word and can not in two words, but the useful one is cannot. It cannot 
دي سين فروم لونج ديستانس سو هير بيتوين وي كان نوت ليس كان seen from a long distance. As we can see, it's the same. The same way of negating that to be and can. Is not, can not. Is not and can not. Uh, I will put it in a group or I will split the groups into two. So we have the group of uh, to be. It means uh, the verb to be is the head. Okay, the verb to be is the head of uh, here, the verbs under. They are auxiliaries. Auxiliaries. So the head is to be, and all the auxiliaries follows the rule of to be. Auxiliaries. We use models, for example, models like can, should, must, and these are models. And we have the auxiliary will for the future, and we have the verb to have, and have has got something to uh, to talk about. Have it's an auxiliary, but it has got something to talk about. Uh, the group of verb to be. The group of verb to be is always is always put in the negative form by adding not to the verb. It means to put these in the negative form. It's like these ones plus not. I am um, not. They are, they are not, and so on. Uh, you can do this, you cannot do this. Uh -huh. You must, you mustn't. You should. Huh? You shouldn't. Huh? I will go tomorrow. I will not go tomorrow. So, to negate these verbs, the verbs of the group of to be is to add not. Neg negative. Huh? Verb to be, not. Models, not. Will, not. Have not. Okay, that's it. This is negative. Why? I told you that we have a problem with the verb have. Have is uh, or have can be in negative form with not. Only if, if it is an auxiliary. Only if it is an auxiliary. Like, I have visited Taj Mahal. I visited Taj Mahal. 
the, the main verb is visiting. Visiting. Okay, the main verb, the main thing here in this sentence is visiting. Auxiliary, the auxiliary have, it means uh, the supporter, something that we add, and it's not, uh, it doesn't wait uh, as the main verb. It's less important than this, the main verb. This is auxiliary, something that we add, okay? It cannot work it's, uh, by its own. No, it must be uh, supported by the main verb. It means uh, this is the auxiliary. If it is an auxiliary like this, yeah, it can be negated with not. I have not visited that much. But if I say I have some money here, what is the main verb here? What is the main verb? Do we have any other verbs? We have only the verb have. Oh, we don't have another verb here. We don't have. So we have only the verb have. It is the main verb. It is the main verb. So, if it is the main verb, it cannot be negated using not. We cannot say, I have not some. No. We have another way. We have another way of negating. This is the first group. The first group plus not. And of course, uh, in all the lessons, inshallah, we will attach some exercises, okay, PDF exam exercises, uh, to, to be done at home, try to have it, uh, to get it easier. The second group, it stands, the verb stand. Okay, verb stand is the second group. The first is to be, and the others. Now, Verb stand and all the other verbs. And be careful what I'm saying. And all the other verbs. Stand. It stands. It stands on a, a square. On a square base. Hmm. I want to negate this sentence. I will not. We will never say it not stands. It stands not. No, we don't have this. We don't have this. We'll use, we use the auxiliary to do. Verb to do. Do with either it is da, do or does. Do not or does not. Huh? So, I have the verb stands, and we cannot say not here, not here, so uh, I will take do not or does not to negate the word. It. Oh, sir, you told me that we don't have not here, so I will write. It stands, and we don't have not here on a square base. So, what we should do? I will tell you. Here, between the subject and the verb, we take one of them. Do not or does not. Yeah? We put do not or does not. Sir, how do we know that it is do not or not does not? Uh, we put do not or does not, sir. Okay, we'll tell you. Since, since the verb has got this one, as it stands, so I will take the same. The verb has got the as, 
So when we take the same, huh? the verb is going to be yes. I take the same, does not. Huh? What about here? Sorry. Um, it's not here. It's here between the uh, does not. So, the same as is here. When we add does not, we omit this. So the sentence becomes it, it does not stand, doesn't stand on a square base. Got it now? So, if we have another verb, ah, uh, stand, stand, go, walk, work, write, erase, and all the other verbs, we, we never use not alone. We never use not here or here. We don't say, we don't say, uh, it not stand or it stands not. No, 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 never, never, never. So, what do we say? What do we do? We just take do not or does not. Oh, uh, sir, how do we know do not or does not? I will tell you uh, that if the verb has got this s, if the verb has got this s, so we take does. Uh, the verb has got this does with s, does not. But be careful, when we write it does not, we take out the s from the verb and it becomes it doesn't stand on a square base. This is the negative form of the verbs in the present simple. The group of to be and the other verbs. Okay? Next time, inshallah, we will do the interrogative form of the present simple. Thank you again for watching. Let's see you next time, inshallah. After having the negative form, I'll try now uh, to, to talk about the interrogative. It's the same thing. Uh, it's not that difficult. Uh, when I see some pupils look at me like this, hmm, what are you talking about? I'm not talking Chinese, I'm not talking English. I'm talking English. It's something easy. Uh, negative form. Hmm? Negative form, we use do not and does not. Uh, remember, remember these words. And then, remember, group to be, group stand. Uh, we remember the two groups. As you can see, we are not doing something new. It's group to be. Other verbs do and does. Now we move to the examples. The same example. The Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower is a famous landmark. Is a famous camera. Negative form, interrogative form. Interrogative form, a kind of question, okay? Interrogative form, it's a kind of question. Uh, with verb to be and its family, uh, it's uh, okay, auxiliaries. Auxiliaries, as we have seen. Auxiliaries. Hmm. Including models. Huh? We. This is the work. This is the job that we should do. Huh? And. It becomes is is the 
Eiffel Tower is the Eiffel Tower uh, famous landmark. Is the Eiffel Tower a famous landmark? We have done nothing. We have done nothing. We have just moved is over to be other auxiliaries or uh, at the beginning of the sentence. To the beginning of the sentence. Before the subject, we moved the auxiliary before the subject to the beginning of the sentence. That's it. And question mark. It can be seen, the same example, it can be seen from a long distance. It can be seen from a long distance. Can you do it? Can you do it? Same. Group to be. So, what should we do? Uh -huh, that's it. That's it, yes. We move the model. We take the model up to here. This is first one, number one. Number two, question mark. So the sentence becomes it uh, uh, can it be seen from a long distance and this here from a distance mm, question mark and this is the interrogative form and you call to it all this group must should will mm, do have be careful uh, we talked about have, have, in some cases, if it is an auxiliary, the same work, the same work, the same job. We move the verb, we move the model, we move the auxiliary to the beginning of the sentence. It means before the subject, and we put question mark, and this is the interrogative form of this group. That's it. But now, if we move to the second group, we move to the second group. The same example, the Eiffel Tower Stands on a huge base. The word stands, the verb stands, the verb to stand. We want to put it in the interrogative form. Remember, I told you that we we'll never put something like uh, not or is or it's another word with the verbs here. Since we have other group, other verbs, other verbs, it means that uh, uh, we must we must take from our pockets. Uh, from our pockets, we take do or are does because we don't have it here we don't have it here so we take it from our pockets do and does where do we put do or does this is number one where i will tell you we put it here put do or does of course, interrogative form. 
What's the... Now, the problem is, which one is used, do or does? You guess? You can. Uh, relate, it, relate it to the negative. Why? Where? Where do we use does? Or why? We use doesn't and not do not in the negative form. Because... Yes, on the verb. The verb has got an S, so the auxiliary verb, which is does, with S. And this one here is not used. The sentence becomes the or does the Eiffel Tower stand or stand? Stands in the. Where's the S? It's here. Okay? This S is here. Does the Eiffel Tower stand? on a huge base and cause to work. This is the anti-negative form. Do, does, do and does. Okay. We have do or does at the beginning of the sentence. It means before the subject. We have the question mark at the end. Now the second question is, uh, where do we use do? Where do we use does? We use does. If the verb has got an s, uh, the verb has got an s, we use does. Uh, when we say if the verb has got an s, I can tell you that when the verb has got an s, when the verb takes an S. If the verb is used with a he, she, or it. Okay? Singular pronouns. Three. These three singular pronouns. He, she, it. All the verbs in the present simple takes an S or ES. It works, it helps, trans, goes, and so on. With these three problems, or with a noun straight away or directly, the Eiffel Tower. Okay? So if the verb has got an S, we use thus. Uh, if we say visitors or uh, they visit, they visit Taj Mahal. They visit Maqam Shaheen. They change it. Hmm? Now, the same thing. Do. I have to. Now, which one is used? We go and look at the verb. They visit. Visit is the verb. Does it have an S? No, it doesn't have an S. Goodbye, does. So we take do here and question mark here. This is the interrogative form with the present symbol. It's very easy. Well, we must know about the auxiliaries. Will auxiliary. Do auxiliary. Have. If it is with another verb, have. If it is with another verb, it is like the first. Haven't or hasn't, and so on. 
If it is the main verb, I have some money, it's the main verb, so it is conjugated like this. That's it. So, in summary, if we want to summarize the negative and interrogative form with the present simple, we only have to uh, understand or learn these things. Number one is we have group to be and we have other verbs. We have other verbs. This is number one. The, the first thing you must know is this. We have the to be and it's a group and we have the other verbs. We verb then number two you must know that we verb to be we verb to be in negative form verb to be and it's a group it's only the auxiliary plus not interrogative form it is the auxiliary then means after the auxiliary at the beginning or before or the subject we move to the other verbs that they are not conjugated like to be. It's different. This is number one. Number two, you must know that in negative form, negative, you have a verb, uh, you have do, not or does not plus verb. That's it. As with the verb with us. In interrogative form, interrogative form, it is do or does. Then after them we have the subject at the end you have the question mark this is all about the interrogative and negative form of the verbs and be careful I will tell you something that in your BM exam they will not tell you put this sentence in the negative form. They will not tell you put this sentence in the interrogative form. No. They will have it in a paragraph. They will have some verbs in this paragraph. Sometimes you find it, they put it in, in brackets. For example, they put not 
This means this sentence uh, should be in the negative form. So, up, are, we have not, it means negative, and we have help, other verb. Okay, so we must use do or does. Okay? The interrogative form is the same thing. They give you the verb, help, for example, in brackets, and then at the end they put this. And you must know that all, uh, since I have a question mark, so this sentence or this verb must be in the interrogative form. Okay? I hope that you have understood these things and you can, uh, uh, can work with some exercises. Maybe I will attach some uh, exercises about the negative interrogative form and to get ready for, ready for the BUM exam. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time, inshallah.